Hello again, everybody. We are back at Edgemate, the podcast for business leaders, entrepreneurs, and salespeople. And today we have a very awesome guest. I'm a little biased. Um, He's the owner, uh, co-owner and main owner of Retro Junkie. And yes, I'm a part owner, but uh, I, di- I digress. Um, Enrique Montero and... I don't know, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and uh, explain a little stuff by yourself, where you're from, and then and then uh, we can get into some of the fun stuff later. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, Chad, and uh, you know, I think your podcast is awesome. My opinion might be a little biased as well, <laughs> but I want you to talk into the microphone, talk into the microphone. As you can tell, he's our, he's, a, he's kind of an expert, and well, we're going to get into it later, oh, but he, 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 well, okay, there's that too, he's got the OCD going on, but like... Promotion. He's been promoting this 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 area in the Bay Area for years, and so he's got a lot more uh, wherewithal when it comes to like the electronics and the videos and stuff like that. So any yeah, I'm, I just I just want I just want everyone to hear it nice and clear, so hopefully we're crispy. Um, anyways, thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I've been uh, considered uh, the Bay Area's bitch for probably uh, my whole life. I, I grew up all over the Bay Area. Um, I, I I lived in San Francisco here and there with, you know, ex-girlfriend and, um, you know, she lived in the sunset, so, you know, I used to throw parties in San Francisco, but um, I, the East Bay is my home, you know, and that's where I, I dwell, and that's where I was raised, in East Bay. Retro Man. Junkie, Walnut Creek. Walnut Creek, California. 12, South Main. No, North Main. Yeah, that's right. North <laughs> Main, on Main Street, that's right, and, uh, yeah, it's been awesome, man, and, you know, you're a huge part of it. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, you're part of the journey with everything. I met you. Um, throwing nightclubs out here when I was doing, I think it was Love and Propaganda. Well, yeah, so the way we met, interesting enough, my industry, and I forgot to mention, is obviously I helped companies get to the edge, um, getting uh, technology solutions that get you closer to your customers, your data, and your employees. And we have a mutual friend, Adrian Keller. He's a champion in, uh, in our industry. Keller. I know. Well, I know because your brother's... professional name. <laughs> I know. I know I, name. No, I know. A.K. Um, he works for uh, Digital Really, um, one of the, uh, one of the more prominent data center uh, providers out there. But yeah, he, uh, he introduced me to Enrique way back when, and you know the rest is history. And again, happy to have you on the show. show. Yeah, the rest is history. Yeah. No. So yeah. Uh, but you wanted uh, me to talk about my myself? Oh yeah, yeah, just a quick intro, and then we're going to go to the first segment, which is called the SWOT Ooh. analysis. The SWOT segment. SWOT analysis. I like that. Yeah, um, it's, well, an, it's an NBA term. I like it. I like it, dude. NBA, like the Warriors game we're about to go to. Oh, uh, that's NBA. Um, oh, NBA. NBA. Yeah, <laughs> just kept trying to bring it. humor here. All right, so no, the NBA SWAT analysis would be like if you throw up a shot and you're swatting it out of the, the right. into, into the yeah. I almost cussed there. We can't do that. I got that. Yeah, you're you're a more basketball player than I I ever would be. But uh, yeah, so Retro Junkie uh, is the business that. You invested in, and um, also my best friends, Allison and Trent. It yep. would have been possible without them. And it's big a, ups. That's right, dude. It's a, you know, so we're we're fifty fifty. I am the managing partner, but they're just as important uh, in the whole aspect of the business, you know. And I couldn't do it without them. Um, but uh, you know, we're blessed. You know, if you haven't heard of Retro Junkie, it's a, a throwback bar in uh, Walnut Creek, and uh, it's awesome. And you can go to retrojunkiebar.com. You can check out our website, see all our coming events. Tonight, uh, we have a Tom Petty tribute. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, and then we have another band uh, called Cheap Trip, which is a, 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 a cheap cheap trick. Uh, so it's like... No, so that's so money. Like, like, these are... Yeah. I mean, this is... The tribute bands and some of the ones that you get are... Like, like I think tomorrow is Guns and Roses. Tomorrow is Roses and Guns. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Roses I mean, I mean, I mean no, well, we're going to get it right, Chad. Okay. Since we want to be... Yeah. Oh, but, but it's like Guns N' Roses, but with that actual slash. Yes. Um, two guys that wear, wear wigs that look like them. Uh, but it's great, you know, once everybody gets uh, in the spirit and they get their, their spirits in them, you know, yeah. so to speak, they, they have a great time. You know, they get up there and they, I guess the suspension of disbelief kicks in and, and you wouldn't tell them that Slash and Axel aren't up there. They don't care. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, drawing yeah, rocks a couple of on stage. <laughs> no, I swear, yeah. We had a Motley Crue tribute called Hollywood Crew. And there was women jumping up there, flashing the crowd. I'm like, I feel like I'm at a Motley Crue concert. You know, I think we just, I think we just gained, I think you just gained three patrons right there with that. Story. I love it. Right so go to RetroJunkieBar.com. <laughs> Hollywood Crew is coming up. If you want to be a part of the Donkey Show, you can jump on us. Yeah. Anyways, 
so that's what Retro Junkies about. It's a lot of fun. We have a DJ at ten thirty uh, afterwards. Um, closes out the night. Does throwback and, and a lot of fun. It, it kind of brings you back to a, a simpler time when when I feel music was was awesome. Rock and roll. The yeah. air was clean. Well, yeah. Just let's jump into the SWAT. Uh -huh. say, I mean, you kind of touched on some of it already, but what would you say some of the strengths of Retro Junkie are? Well, you know, my, Retro Junkie is a um, creative endeavor that I started because there was a, a, a niche that, well, there was nothing like anywhere I wanted to go in the, in the, in the Bay Area, to be honest with you, on a weekend basis. Um, and I came from the nightclub scene, which was like electronic music and top 40, oh God. And I just, getting older, you know. I didn't want to, uh, as I started getting in my mid to late 30s, I didn't want to really, I wasn't into that anymore. Yeah. And I'm an old school rock and roller. You know, all my events, you know, I used to do, would, I would bring out rock I stars. wanna rock! Absolutely. <gasps> I have a Twisted Sister shirt. I, I almost, want to I just ripped the sleeves off. And so I basically would do stuff different where I would incorporate an element of rock into my parties. You know, I'd bring out a Tommy Lee, my was my resident DJ. Yeah. I had him come out and DJ uh, for about a year. I had a Jonathan Davis from Corn. You know, stuff like that. And, and so I would do stuff that I thought was different always, even in my parties and events that I was doing in San Francisco. Um, so when I was in Walnut Creek, I basically needed to find something that was like that. There was nothing like that. You have your typical dive bar. You have your typical bar that you just sit there and you just basically drink your pints of beer and watch the paint go off the wall. And for me, I need more than that. I'm yeah. you know, I yeah. need... Um, you know, I need entertainment. I, you know, I want to celebrate a birthday. I want to do something special. I want to, a friend comes to town and I want to show off my town. Where am I going to take them? You know, what's different about, what's unique about our city and our area that uh, on a consistent basis, you know, we have a lot of great concerts come through, but not uh, every every weekend. You got to wait, you know, every three months you might get lucky, but every weekend I wanted something consistent. So our strength, my strength was basically passion and what, entertaining myself, you know, and keeping myself entertained. and. If I'm not entertained and I don't want to be there, I haven't expect anyone else. Are you not entertained? Right, exactly. <laughs> and um, so, so that's that's kind of my mentality, and I think that's why we've been uh, somewhat successful. You yeah. know, people have responded. It's just because of that level of um, of passion, and, and also my experience. I'm just glad. I mean, the, the, the surviving COVID, like that, must have been a scary scenario. Um, I mean, well, yeah, let's get jump into some uh, some weak weaknesses. Like, weaknesses, like, would you say? Well, weaknesses, so, yeah, COVID, well, you know, COVID was definitely a strength, you know, just to embellish, to embellish on what you were saying with COVID. I mean, that was a rough time for a lot of people, but for us, I think being a promoter for so long, 20 years I've been promoting events, you know, I've always struggled throwing parties. I mean, not struggle, but it's just yeah. always been a struggle, you know, putting events together and whatnot. So that's prepared me when COVID happened to, to actually... Uh, to survive, I guess you would say. Yeah. And a lot of people were scared to do certain things and held on the money they had, and we doubled down and, and moved forward. But our weakness, I would say, you're asking the weakness at this point. Yeah, we're we're on the W. So we're on the W now. Yeah. So uh, the weakness, I would say, would probably be navigating a small business in California. You know, anyone who owns a small business in California. <laughs> Uh, wow, there's so much shit happening. I thought it was easy to run a business in California. No, no. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not very simple. simple. It's, it's not... No, no it's... <laughs> it, well, I'll tell you what. I, I probably... I could put butts in seats, but as far as all the, the laws and everything, I mean, this has been my first bar that I've owned yeah. on my own, and uh, it just helps to have great partners and a good team yeah. and, and, and really help me navigate through these. And I have, I have uh, you know, I have people I lean on, you know, uh, to know my weaknesses. And I lean on them when it comes to uh, city permits, and, and uh, you know, obviously, I have a great lawyer, Mark Rennie. He's mm -hmm. one of the best entertainment lawyers in San Francisco, uh, and so he, I've leaned on him. Might have to get him on the show. We have to. He's <laughs> an OG. He's old school. I love hearing his stories. Uh, yeah. When he used to book Chris Isaac back in the day, and, and you know, he's old school. But uh, so you know, I would say you know that is our weakness. Is just that, and, and you know, finding good good employees. You know, mm -hmm. like any oh, business. Okay. You know, keeping. Good employees and it, you know not expecting everybody to work like you and treat your business like your baby like you did because obviously not everyone's going to do that they're going to treat it like a check so when you do have somebody who has that passion you know take care of them bring them along and keep them you know good point so that's uh something we're working on and it's always been a week especially during the pandemic is finding good staff you know not having a, a rotating uh motley crew of misfits you know every month and, and as fun as that is it doesn't make for good business because 
you're trying to train somebody and repetition develops skill that enables you to perform under pressure. That's a, a Bill Walsh quote from the San Francisco 49ers. You know, yeah. they won a bunch of Super Bowls and uh, when that is fan, obviously. So, that is, you know, you want a good staff and, and the more they're, they're doing it, it's like tying the shoe with all of a sudden when you're slammed, they're able to perform under pressure. Cool. So now we're going to go on to the O SWAT, the, uh, of the SWAT category, and that would be opportunities. Like what do you, where do you see some opportunities for uh, well, uh, uh, well, you know, I believe that every, uh, not me, everyone asks me, you know, what do you, can you open one of these in our town? Yeah. There'll be a lot of people that come to Walnut Creek in, in the East Bay, and they're, um, we're in between two Marriott hotels, so we get a lot of tour, a lot of people coming in. And, Oh, I live in Texas. You got to open one of these in Texas. Uh-huh. So I believe there should be a retro junkie bar on every main street in America. Not everyone, but the ones that you know are cool. And uh, so the opportunities are there. near an NFL city. Yeah, uh, you know the suburbs. You know somewhere in an affluent city like Walnut yeah. Creek, uh, but it's got to be outside, outside the city. You mm-hmm. know, I think. But uh, so I would say like an Orange County area. You know. Um, uh, Maybe like uh, Scottsdale, maybe I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. somewhere outside of Phoenix, yeah. stuff like that. So um, the opportunities there, um, there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of people that want to invest as well, um, and you know, being open now for five years, you know, we could get our own uh, capital as well, easier than we would when we first started yeah. out. We had to go to private funding to my friends and family and whatnot mm-hmm. just to to get what we needed to, to get where we're at now. So sure. um, that's pretty much the opportunity I'm looking forward to, and uh, yeah. I'm ready to take that leap hopefully soon. Second location. Yeah, that'd, that'd be fun. Um, and conversely, uh, threats, possible threats. The retro junkie. Threats. Um, well, I, you know, I always, my mentality has been since day one is, is my biggest enemy has always been myself. You know, I don't know, I know it sounds cliche, <laughs> you know, very cliche, but, but it's yeah. true. You know, I, I, I feel even when I was promoting, I don't think there was any promoter out there that could go toe to toe with me when I was at the best. You know, and uh, yeah. so that feels the same way now. You know, as long as I'm on my game and uh, taking care of my health, yeah, and, you know, focus, back, yeah, focus, yeah, 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 focus, and I don't have any outside distractions. You know, some crazy, you know, relationship or something, or some kind of distraction. <laughs> like, like, like Andrew Wiggins, like, like <laughs> well, whatever's going on there, sure. You know, some kind of sucky business, just taking your energy out. And, yeah. You know, so those, that's my threat. It's just internally, you know. I think, uh, you know, there's obviously the external threats. There's, there's, there's threats. From an outside perspective, with competition, obviously that's healthy. You know, I don't mind. I mean, yeah, all, all, all ships rise with the tide. Absolutely, I thrive under competition. You know, you know, and that's for me. It's like I'll take the Pepsi challenge with anybody. I've had <laughs> bars come in town trying to copy us, book bigger tributes, and uh, it just doesn't work that way. You know, you lack the passion and the ingenuity to actually to, to, to sustain that. I like how you answer that. Most, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in sales, right? And most people are afraid of competition, but you, it's friendly competition. You, you, you well, I love it. And you can learn, and you can learn from that, and then, and then challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, what yeah, competition yeah. is good. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. It's, it's the opposite, obviously, of monopoly. You want, it's healthy, you know, and, and that's what keeps it fair. And, and, and you know, and, and because of these competitions of uh, people trying to compete with us, it's, it's made us kind of change things and give more value where maybe sure. before we haven't offered more value to our clientele. We'll rest on your laurels. Exactly. <laughs> so anyways, I like it. Cool. Well, that was awesome. Yeah, man. That was a great explanation of your business. And now, uh, can we kind of get into some of the fun stuff? All right. Uh,